F is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. What? I don't know why you were singing. <laughs> well, because it's Valentine's Day. Well, it's not Valentine's Day yet, but we have the Valentine's the Day. Valentine's background. Decor. No, by the way, you can show. Oh, sorry. So sorry. Anyway. What's up? It's been a little while since we've done a haul video, uh, but everything's been kind of like thrown off because you got a really big buy um, and then I just did a big buy. And so we're kind of like not doing our normal sourcing mm -hmm. and uh, and we're bad and, and getting out of the habit. And so we were like, let's do a stinking haul video. Oh, I just hurt myself. Let's <laughs> do a haul video already. Yeah. So we got kind of a weird mixture of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but why don't we go ahead and... What do you got? What do you, uh... So I got some stuff from the bins. I went yesterday to the bins, took our friend, my friend Danielle, Dynasty, and I took our friend Dana, uh, who some of you know, who lives here in town. Uh, she was my very first assistant uh, years ago, and she has never been to the bins, guys. She's a reseller and has never been to the bins and, and lives here in it? Vegas. Here's the thing. Dana is not a morning person by any stretch of the imagination, so... We always go at eight in the morning, so she was never going to come at eight in the morning yeah. to anything. She would have to be dragged kicking and screaming. So we're like, all right, fine, we'll go at noon. Noon on a Saturday, 12 out of 10 do not recommend. However, she hated it as much as we thought she, she was She felt like to. Johnny Cash on my t-shirt. She was like, yeah, she was not a fan. Uh, she stuck it out for two hours, though. I have to give her credit where credit is due. She's like... No, not so much. Yeah, she hated it. However, later on, she realized she had actually pulled a, a t-shirt that was worth some money. Yeah, she had pulled a t-shirt from under the nose of the t-shirt bros. Uh, so rose. I know. So she probably felt a little proud of that. Anyway, she got a, she, she picked like 10 things or something. Um, anyway, but we had fun. So we did that and did lunch. But I, I didn't really need to source. Not that I didn't find anything, of course. But I really didn't need to source. But I still spent like 60 bucks. I got like half a cart full. All right. So what's the first thing you have to share with us? So actually, this first thing I'm going to have to share is from the buyout that I did from Chrissy. Uh, she is the owner of Red Cake Recycle. And um, she is a vintage clothing seller that has decided to get out of the business. And she had posted that she was getting rid of everything. And I've known her for a few years. I reached out to her. I was like, I want to buy all your stuff. So I did. So she uh, shipped me about 500 items and I'm still processing and working through all of those. And I'll probably be showing you things from that haul for yeah. a while, but I wanted to show you specifically like some super cute things. Now, Chrissy is not only a vintage clothing seller, she's someone that sews and does a lot of upcycling. So she had created a whole bunch of really fun and funky things that she was selling over the last few years. And I was fortunate enough in this buyout to get some of um, the leftovers that she hadn't sold yep. yet. So. Well, and because she's in Oregon, the seven boxes of stuff that she shipped to you, it wasn't too crazy expensive. No, no, it was, it was only, it was like $150 of it was shipping. Seven boxes. Yeah. 500 items. So one of the things I wanted to show that she had done, which is super cool. Like I can't sew anything. Like I can barely sew a button on. I probably could if I was hard pressed, but she took a lot of, um, vintage or some of not so vintage, but like vintage or stained, uh, jeans, men's and women's from the bins, because all of her sourcing is done at the bins in Portland. And she would sew like super cool designs on them. So these are men's vintage Levi's that are cut off. So they're made into like booty shorts. And then these like quilted patches of really fabric cute. sewn on. So cute, so cute. So I'm gonna sell, uh, sell these for like 30 to $40. They're all tiny, like my daughter would wear them. Um, but look how cute these like vintage Wrangler men's jeans. Nobody wants those, but make them cut off and put some cute little things on them. I little know Daisy that. Dukes. So this is this is probably my favorite pair. They're just so cute. If you are a tiny person and like this style, let me know because I think they're adorable. I would wear them if they, if I were smaller. I shouldn't say if they were bigger. If I were smaller, <laughs> I would wear them. So those are just really just something I wanted to show. I think she's super talented and it's a really cute idea. And I have about you know, uh, 10 or so pairs of different ones right. like this. Um, I went to the bins a couple times last week without Vicky. Um, didn't get a ton of stuff, but I actually, the small amount of stuff I did get, I got some really good items. I also went to, um, our Goodwill down the street, only found like two things, but one of them was pretty decent. And I bought some stuff from yesterday's fits. And then I also just did a really big buy, another big buy from our friend Jen Goodell. 
Um, I'm only going to show like a couple of pieces from her because I'm actually in the, right in the middle of photographing everything. So maybe our next haul video will be more pieces from that. But I got like around 130 pieces um, shipped from her in, I believe she's in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I was somewhere she's in the Wisconsin. Midwest there. Um, so I'm going to show some of that too. But the first piece I have, um, I bought a bunch of uh, t-shirts and stuff from Yesterday's Fits, um, like five bucks a piece. And this first one, I just really like the nostalgia of it. It is single stitch. The tag is all worn away, but I would say this is 90s based on the construction and, and what the shirt is. Um, and it is this uh, TDK t-shirt. And if you're my age or older, um, you're going to be nostalgic for this because maybe you made some mixtapes for mm -hmm. friends or uh, romantic conquests. I know I was all about the mixtape. Of course you I, were. Well, mostly just for friends or for my, actually, I don't know if I ever made, maybe I made a mixtape once for a friend a couple times, but I loved making mixtapes for myself. Um, that's when you had, you had to have like the stereo that had the two tape deck. Oh yeah. And you had to have it on pause, play. pause, you would play, record and pause. And then you unpause it for the song uh, that you're going to do over to that, you know, and then eventually you graduated up to making mixed CDs. But it was all about the mixtape, man. Um, and so this is just a really fun design. And uh, I already have this listed. I think I probably have it listed for like 40 bucks. But I love it. You're funny. All right. This was, uh, I believe, a Ben's pull. Uh, and this is just uh, vintage, like 80s Liz Sport, Liz Claiborne. 80s, that tag went into like early 90s. But this is just a black velour um, or velvet jumpsuit it's just pockets. a one piece one piece jumpsuit with pockets it has an elastic waist it zips up the front so like these one piece baggy sized rompers are super um popular right now like from everywhere so i like the idea of this being a vintage one it's not listed yet but i'll probably list it in the neighborhood of like 75 bucks it's cute. cute it's really soft um and it's still current it's something someone would wear they would cuff the 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 things and then maybe pull down the zipper, maybe put something patterned oh. or bright under it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it'd be cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, one of the couple of pieces that I have from um, Jen's stuff and um, I got like three or four different green piece t-shirts. So I love the design. It's got the really cool giraffes on it, a great color. Um, but what I think is really interesting, I actually got two of the same shirt. What I think is really interesting is first of all, this is from the eighties and it's actually from 1988 but it's a screen stars but it's like a 3x screen stars and so it probably is more like an xl 2xl um it was dead stock but it needed to be washed so i did wash it uh but for a screen stars it's ginormous yeah they're always tiny yeah it's probably like a an xl to a 2xl uh, which is really cool so to have like an 80s shirt that's actually a good size is pretty impressive, but um, I love it. I love the the design on it. I think it's a really cool shirt. I'm right in the middle of photographing this one, so um, I'll probably, but this one I probably will put up for a little bit higher. I'm working on bringing my prices down, but this one I'll probably hope to sell for at least 50. That's cool. This, this were, these were Vince Biden as well. Uh, I always talk about like vintage BCBG or vintage Juicy Couture being back, even the vintage Abercrombie or Victoria's Secret, the low rise wide leg yoga pants style of sweatpants for women, that whole late 90s, early Y2K is super popular again. Uh, expect to see a lot of Britney Spears hip bones hanging out like that Ooh, was kind of like the thing. So this is just a pair of these. They're in great condition. They're kind of a lighter green. These are BCBG with the crown. Uh, like low rise, straight leg, like yoga pants. Um, so, I mean, they don't go for a ton. However, the hoodies go for a lot more, but the pants don't go for a ton. I mean, if you've got juicy blinged across the butt in their vintage, put them for over a hundred bucks. If you've got the set, put it for like 150. But these alone were probably like 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. All right, next up, this is my other piece from uh, Jen's stuff that she sent me. Um, now, this is one of the cooler shirts, but when she, you know, I got, we did like a video call first, so I got to see every single piece. I knew what I was getting. Um, and so this is a 2001 Tomb Raider, and this is from the movie, the Tomb Raider uh, t-shirt. It is dated 2001 at the bottom. But the issue with this particular shirt is the sleeves were altered. They were like super short and like uh, actually sewn with a sewing machine. 
And so um, w when I got it, I was like, I'm going to see if I can pull these, if I can fix these. And it turned out they weren't permanently altered. They were just like double folded up and then sewn. And I was able to take out all of the uh, threading on it. And then I washed them and it's just right back to their yeah, original. Yeah, you can't even tell. No. So I was actually really excited about that. It's on the really cool um, blue grape tag. Now, if you look at like comps for uh, t-shirts, Tomb Raider t-shirts from 2001, the, they're kind of all over the place. This particular one, there aren't as many of, um, but I don't think it's like a crazy huge money maker. They'll probably list this for about a hundred, hope to get 75 to a hundred for it. Uh, just a cool shirt. And I was really excited that I was able to fix the sleeves and um, bring a little value back to the shirt. Look at you, sewing and everything. I mean, is pulling thread out I considered don't know. sewing? Maybe. I don't know. Close. I probably wouldn't have even attempted that. So this is not like a huge banger or anything like that, but I just wanted to say, like, I always pick these up. This is vintage, probably 90s, Bobby Brooks. Not a, not a good brand. In general, don't pick up Bobby Brooks uh, for the brand. But I always pick up these denim embroidered um, shirts, these button-up shirts for men and women. Bobby Brooks had a lot of plus-size stuff. This one's not plus, but it's just like this plaid shirt with uh, a denim collar, and it's got some embroidered Christmas doohickeys on the front I always sell them always 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 I pick them up every time nobody wants them you can get them in a thrift store you can get them at the bins they're always super cheap and I sell them for between 40 and 60 bucks and they always sell on Etsy I'm telling so, you the granny core stuff it's like I feel like it was getting popular like a year ago or so but but right now it feels like it's getting even more so it may be I've sold some like really ridiculous you know sweaters and sweatshirts with with uh uh, doily crap on them and yeah you know you just never know I mean it's not my style I wouldn't wear that I didn't wear that when it was popular I don't it's not my style now but the young kids really like those the youths like them the youths like them so I mean don't don't like overlook that type of stuff Bobby Brooks it might have even been sold at Walmart it was one of those there's a bunch of them even the faded glory ones from the 90s that sold at Walmart that look like that they're worth picking up because those are the things that sell they're a solid bread and butter 40 to 50 bucks on Etsy all the time yeah all right, so I, every once in a while, I do like to go to the Goodwill right down the street. I made the mistake of like four o'clock in the afternoon on a school day being like, I'm going to go to the Goodwill. And she's like, what? And I went in there and it was full of high school kids, which was not great. Um, I only got two things. I did not go. I don't like our Goodwill. Yeah, I only got like two things. I was bored, though. I just wanted to get out of the house. And uh, but one of them, this I actually think is kind of cool. So I, I saw this and of course I grabbed it because I see like. Um, it looks like this might be from Psycho, uh, and it just all I could see is it says Evil Skies. So I was like, hmm, I wonder what that is. It's just on a on a jersey's tag. It's not vintage, and it was like six ninety nine. And I'm like, should I get this? I don't know. And so I did a Google Lens search, and it turns out it's actually from this company called Half Evil, Half Evil three three three. Get it? Six six six. Anyway. And they're a really interesting company because they're kind of like how you know, there's like Supreme and some of these other companies where all they do is these limited drops and they sell out really quick and it's this whole thing. Well, they wanted to do one like that that was more affordable. And so it's a similar type of thing, but like all their t-shirts are $3.33 and then their hoodies are like 30 bucks and blah, blah, blah. But they do a lot of like team ups and stuff. And so this was actually the half evil. They um, collabed with a rapper called Lil Skies, so Evil Skies, uh, back in like 2018. And so now the cops are kind of a little all over the place. There's one of these exact color, exact uh, size on Grail for 300. I'm not selling this for 300. Hmm. Um, I, I would say I'll probably be able to sell it for anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars. Uh, I think I have it listed already for like 100 or 150 um, but still kind of an interesting you never know what you're gonna get and you should definitely be using Google Lens um, when you're looking at graphics on stuff if you're not sure maybe they have some value yeah the last six months to a year Google Lens has really stepped up it used mm -hmm. to be total garbage it was very hit or miss now it actually is really helpful both when you're listing and when you're sourcing and this is something I learned recently just because I wasn't paying attention you when you do the Google Lens and you do a picture and maybe you don't get the results you're looking for you can actually add text yeah 
I didn't know that before. I, so yeah. I just wanted to make sure if there's anybody like if out there. you have there, a brand and, and the brand doesn't come up, you can add the brand with the photo. Yeah, it's it. bringing up like a bunch of similar stuff. But it's not mm -hmm. quite zeroing on, in on your image. You can add the brand or there's like a keyword that will like maybe it's a particular football team. And that'll narrow it down so it only shows the, the results. So that's really helped a couple of times. Also, when you're listing, if you don't know this, if you're in the middle of a listing, whether you're in List Perfectly or in eBay, you can right click your photo and it will open up search on Google Lens. Wow. So if you've uploaded a photo into a listing or into a draft, you can right click and search Google Lens with the photo without having to do anything extra. Yeah. It's like two extra clicks. That works in both lists perfectly, whether you're drafting in there or you're drafting in yeah. eBay. But when you're outsourcing, Google Lens can be huge for helping you not miss some really good stuff. Yeah. So grab this at the bins yesterday. This is just an early, God, everybody remembers these, right? Happy Bunny. This was like Y2K baby doll t-shirt and kind of like a little Jersey baby doll tee with a split neck. Uh, it was probably sold at Walmart, Happy Bunny, but I'm probably going to get 40 to 50 bucks for it and it cost me like 75 cents. So Happy Bunny, Y2K, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Ed Hardy, it's all back, guys. It's all coming back. Now, I did do some sourcing from uh, some online sites. I sourced some from eBay this last couple of weeks, sourced something from Macari, and this I sourced from Macari based on a tip from our friend, our sweet friend Jody. Um, she saw this on Mercari. She already had too much stuff herself because she didn't want somebody to miss out on the opportunity. She's like, this looks like something Katie would buy. And so she sent me She's the so link cute. for it. It's 1984 Adam Ant uh, strip tour uh, kind of vest sleeveless it's sweatshirt. It's a sleeveless sweatshirt. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really cool, really cute. And they had it up for 20 bucks. Now, once I paid, I had to pay shipping and fees and stuff. Or whatever and it ended up being like thirty dollars but i was like you know what i'm not gonna make a crazy amount of money on this i think i have it listed at like a hundred and i hope to get like 75 to 100 so like after fees and everything i'm not gonna make a ton of money but i it's mean come on it's 20 bucks it's so cool and how if awesome you are is an this adam fan, there's not a ton of adam man stuff out yeah so i love it i think it's fantastic it's in really good condition it's not it's small but it's not tiny 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 so Hopefully this, uh, somebody will pick this up and they will be loving it. But thanks, Jody. We love you. All right. So this was a bins find yesterday. I'm going to say, so here's the thing. It's gross. <laughs> like it's gross. It's dirty. Um, it is a canvas juicy couture bag. It probably smells like pee. I have not smelled it. It is I mean, yellowed. It's very close to my face. It's sorry. It's yellowed. It's filthy. It's canvas, but it's, it's disgusting. Up. It's disgusting. But it is vintage juicy couture. And what I'm going to do is, what is the United Kingdom of Couture? It's the wrong kind of juicy. <laughs> Ew. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do is bleach it because the I'm going to full on bleach this. There's you? nothing. Well, Katie is. Uh, <laughs> nothing. It's not going to damage the the print on it just because of the way that it's made. Um, so well, I'm going to take this off, can't you? Oh just yeah, that, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I okay. think it's just a tie. Uh, so I'm going to bleach it and then I'm going to sell it. I haven't done any comps. I do know Vintage Juicy Couture is hot again, as I've talked about. So um, whether this one is worth much or not, I don't know. I'm it, Without looking at anything, my thought is I'm going to list it for about 65, 75 bucks and see where it goes from there. Maybe it's worth more. Maybe it's worth less. We'll see. I don't know. All right. Next up, um, as I said, I did a little sourcing on eBay. Sometimes I'll go and I'll look and I have like search alerts and stuff. I'll go and look at like um, vintage t-shirt lots. But for the most part, it's ridiculous how much vintage t-shirt lots go for on eBay. Even with the most mediocre crap, it's just really, for the most part, is almost never worth it. Um, unless you're just on top of it all the time. And I just can't keep on top of it constantly. But I did get a couple of lots. I got one that had like 15 pieces in it um, for like 40 bucks. And then I got, had another one I found that had five pieces. And it was listed at 30 plus shipping. But then they accepted best offer. And so I was like, I'll send an offer for 20 bucks. And they accepted because I'm like, you know, I had to put in my payment information and I was like, well, maybe they'll see I'm, I'm ready. They'll get the money right away and they'll accept this. They did. So it's like 30 bucks for five pieces. Um, there was a really cool Iditarod shirt in there, Raglan shirt that was really awesome. And then there was this piece, which uh, actually had a broken zipper. Um, and they had, you know, they disclosed in it like everything that was wrong with anything that was in the, in the thing. And I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't realize it had a broken zipper. And so when I got it, I was like, oh man. But then I realized it just had come undone at the bottom. Like maybe somebody tugged on it too hard and I was able to pop it right back in and it's totally fine as is. Um, and this is a Ben Davis shirt, vintage Ben Davis made in the USA shirt. It's a three XL. So I don't know if there's any that, um, other ones out there that are quite this size. Maybe there are. 
But overall, when you look at the comps on these, um, Ben Davis, uh, they're kind of like, what do you call the um, railroad stripes yeah, or whatever? Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. Uh, kind of mechanic shirt almost. Um, the the comps are really good, like over 100 bucks, 100, 200 bucks. Um, this does have a little bit of discoloration on it. I washed it and everything. But, but with inside that... inside the collar, right? It's not... Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, but then there's a little bit on the outside, too. But I don't know if you can really, if it really stands out. But, of course, I'll disclose that. Um, but with the size and what it is, made in the USA, and no longer with a broken zipper, I feel like I can most likely pretty easily get 100 bucks for this. So right there, um, I've, like, tripled what I put into that uh, buy. And so this and the Iditarod t-shirt I got, and then the, the other three t-shirts were kind of mediocre, but I think it ended up being a really, really good buy. And that's why I got this so cheap was because it had that pretty major flaw and it no longer has that flaw. No, it's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. So uh, this was a bins buy from yesterday. Um, I do show these quite often because whenever I find them, I pick them up, even when they're damaged, because even if they're damaged, they are going to sell. Now this one is a made in Hong Kong. So that right there, you can tell it's vintage, but it is a vintage satin. I don't believe this is silk, but it feels like a satin, uh, robe. It looks, it looks like silk, but it does not feel like silk. It's like too thick. So it's probably polyester, um, which is satin. And it's just the the embroidered dragon on the back. Mm. It's in blue. It has pockets in the front. There's no um, belt. So what I usually do is I will include a satin. I, I buy by the spool. I buy different colored satin ribbons, and I will include them in robes like this because having some closure is better than having no closure. Um, on it, sometimes we just need closure, you guys. <laughs> you know what I'm and this one has the really cool name Frenchie embroidered on it. So I think that's kind of fun. Um, anyway, it's, it's, you know, I'm going to try to wash this cause it does smell a little bit funky, but, um, it's got some pill, some pulls in the fabric and it looks well, like there maybe. might be some fading in the blue, but, uh, you know what? I'll probably get at least still like 50 to $75 for it, even with these mm -hmm. damages. So always pick those up. They're, they're worth picking up. Wasn't Frenchie a beauty school dropout? She was. Just saying. Beauty school All right. Dropout. Coincidentally, Vicky is not the only one to have some cool upcycled stuff to show you guys today. This is a pair of vintage, maybe late 90s, probably Y2K. I already listed these. I put them as Y2K um, because that was kind of when they were really popular, the Joe Boxer. Now, there aren't a ton of great comps for Joe Boxer jeans. Well, they're um, just a Kmart brand, but. Yeah, but they were like a cool Kmart brand back in the day uh, for some of us poor kids, okay? Um, anyway, like I wasn't a poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't need you discounting the, the Kmart brand anyway. Uh, and I feel like jeans weren't like the major, I feel like Joe Boxer is like a lot of like, um, sleepwear sleep. Yeah. Anyway. So these are really cool. They got the, the eight ball lining and, uh, but I grabbed these and the same day I grabbed these, I was with Vicky at the bins and she found, I think it was when we were with, um, no, we weren't with them, but you wanted to show it was, we were, we were faking out some friends, some maybe Ryan, because you had found like a really cool liquid blue, but it wasn't actually vintage and it was completely thrashed. And so I went ahead and bought it. But it was a cool Alice in Wonderland faded yes. out print. Yes. And so I went ahead and bought it. I bought these jeans and these jeans had a bunch of wear and they were all kind of ripped out on the back of the heels. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to see if Crystal can go ahead and upcycle these by combining that shirt and these jeans and guys. She did a crazy good job. Look at this. She and she just did fantastic. You see, she's got the Mad Hatter there, the rabbit, the Alice, the Cheshire cat. I mean, it just looks so freaking cool. So there's the pockets, and then um, you can see at the bottom, at the back. So you, this is she cut out the backs because they were seriously they were just like somebody had chewed the bottoms right off in the back, and so she added the t-shirt part of the shirt on the back as well. And I think they just turned out fantastic. I love it. I think they're super cool. Um, I've already listed these. I think I listed them at 200. I'm hoping I can get at least 100 bucks for them. I think you can. But they're and baggy and yeah. Katie threatened to wear these to the bins to uh, look like the rest of her t-shirt bro friends. Well, no, that was those. That was those other ones. Those Miss Keens. Both. And of, I was gonna be like, both hello, of which. hello, fellow kids. <laughs> Come on, that's how you do it. Anyway, these are super awesome. I love them, and I can't wait to sell them to somebody so they can wear them. Such a dork. All right, so grab this at the bins yesterday. I've sold this game a handful of times. It's not uh, it's not very popular. You don't find it very often. I paid a dollar. Usually um, boxed games, you, you, you pay like a dollar for at the bins. They don't make you pay by the weight. Puzzles and boxed games. Um, 
So this is vintage 70s. It's a game called Nip Nop. I've never seen this game before in my life. I've sold it a few times. It's really, it's just this weird ping pong game. Um, anyway, it doesn't sell for a ton on eBay. It sells for between like 30 and $40 plus shipping. It's super lightweight. This weighs like two pounds, but it's on a larger size. Sar larger side, I should say. Um, but it does sell a little bit better on Etsy. Like vintage games I do very well with on Etsy. So I'll probably list this for like 50 or $60 plus shipping on Etsy. It is missing one of the ping pongs, but I can get a package of ping pongs delivered from Amazon for like $3. So I'm just gonna pay that $3 so that they have a complete game. The colors are two different colors. There's like three of the ping pongs are yellow and three are pink and it's missing one pink one. So nip nop, nip nop. The pink one I replace it with may not be the exact same color, but as long as it's the same size and or you weight, get it works a pack the same. Of three, and then they'll all match. Well, they don't come that way. The way oh. anyway. So whatever. Just so you know, like that's the uh, that's what I'm gonna do with it. Just so at least the game's complete. Um, I would I did look and would source the specific one that goes with that game if it were available, but it is not. So all right, cool. Okay, so like i said i went to the bids a couple i went saturday and sunday last week and uh just didn't find anything super great overall like not a lot of stuff really didn't spend very much but man i was like really doing well with finding some upscale like higher end pieces um and this first one uh i only learned about this brand because of victoria i'm gonna Ooh, give her the I get credit. credit sometimes i give her credit where it's i knew you were gonna jump in and be like i told you about that brand it's true anyway oh, yeah. aviator nation which is just basically like uh rich, of mall brand rich kid leisure wear um it's you know hoodies and t-shirts and stuff like that and sweatshirts and so but it's like expensive it's like stupid expensive. I think I learned about it because I found a tote bag and that's when you told me about it. I found a sweater. Yeah, and you, and you found a sweater. But I wasn't paying attention until I found my tote bag. Um, anyway, so this is a hoodie. Global Citizen. So this is actually a collab with uh, Global Citizen is a nonprofit. They do a bunch of activism and stuff. And so it says Global Citizen. It's actually a really good prize or prize. It's a really good size. Uh, it's an XL and it's in great condition, really soft. I should be able to sell this for like 150 bucks, um, 100 to 150 bucks. And uh, especially because of the size, I think I saw one that had gone for only like 50 bucks or 60 bucks, but it was like an extra small, which is real tiny. And they probably put it in auction. Yeah. Um, but uh, so when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, this is like one of those things that the, the t-shirt bros, they don't know about it. So, but this is how you learn. You learn because you have an experience where you see something. So just remember guys, not so much the global citizen thing, but remember, Aviator Nation. And they almost always have lines that are somewhat rainbow looking on mm -hmm. whatever it is, whether it's stripes. a sweater or stripes. Yeah, stripes that are like not full rainbow, but like the red, orange, yellow yeah. at least. That's well, part of their logo. So, yep. but yeah, the sweaters, the sweatshirts, they have something. So look for the stripes and then then you should be able to. Yeah, because this was like, it was, a, it was a rotation where I had found literally nothing and I was so irritated. And then I went back around to the, one of the sides and this was right on top. So somebody else had probably picked it up and was like, man, whatever. Um, that was dumb. They saw like probably the printed tag and were just like, oh, it's just some cheap hoodie that's not worth anything. So dumb. Those stupid idiots. Gah! All right, so these were bins fine yesterday. These are also pretty gross. I'm just going to throw them in the washing machine. They just machine. creep me out, man. So those of us that are of a certain age will probably recognize these. These are vintage Cabbage Patch Kid Kusa dolls. This is when they had the line of, like, the, these are the Cabbage Patch Kid pets. They're like dogs, cats, whatever. None of them have their clothes on, but, and they're all kind of dirty, but I'm just going to uh, throw them in the washing machine and sell them as a lot. They're not super old. I actually think out. these are, it says right on their heads, doesn't it? these are early 2000s. So I think these are, um, well, this is, this is 19, is that 85? I can't tell what it says. I'm, or no, I'm that's 2000. No, I'm, hold on. Anyway, I think they might be remakes now that oh, I'm looking at it. Oh, I see, 2002. But it doesn't matter. Still 2002 is still vintage. So I'm going to throw these. I'm going to wash them, throw them in a lot, and probably sell them for like 40 bucks for the lot plus it shipping. Yeah, man. Uh, but they didn't cost much. They were like a dollar a piece, a dollar fifty a piece. They I was like, like, why the hell does that Cabbage Patch doll have a tail? It's weird. Okay. 
if they have the clothes, they're definitely worth selling individually, but they don't have the clothes. So I'm just going to sell them as is. Okay. So back to the bins this last weekend. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I found some really good kind of higher end, more luxury items or higher end brands. Um, and this is a vintage polo Ralph Lauren, uh, kind of casual blazer sport coat with the crest. Any of these that have the crest on them, they tend to do really well. Um, it had like these white lines going across and I couldn't tell if that was like scratches in it or what. And so I treated it, washed them, even though it says dry clean only, it's a hundred percent cotton. So I went ahead and washed it and then I did lay it out to dry first. Cause I didn't, um, I didn't want anything to be like, uh, to get dried all bent over or anything like that. And then I put it back in the dryer a little bit at the end to soften it up. Uh, but it came clean. And it looks great. And um, I think I listed this for like 200, but I should be able to get like 100, 125, 150 for it. Um, it's a good size and it's in great condition. It's got the cool crest. Um, so anytime you see anything like a blazer like this that has the crest on it, it's going to do well, whether yeah. it's vintage or not. Men's they, they or women's well. vintage or not. Yep, they do well. Yep. So I was very excited about finding this. Again, I found very little. I think I spent like maybe 15 bucks each day. Um, but the few pieces I was able to get, I got some really good dollar amounts. So I actually do fairly well at the bins in the shoe department. I do talk about that and I'll show the shoes that I find um, because, you know, usually you get this whole rush of people that they scoop all the shoes out, but for the most part, they throw most back and they don't, um, they're really looking for certain shoes that I guess are going to sell really fast at the flea market for the most part. Mm -hmm. These people sell at flea markets. So they tend to throw back a bunch that I'm perfectly fine picking up. Um, but anyway, so I probably paid about three to $4 for these based on weight. They're under two pounds. These are just Vans. Uh, high top vans, they're suede and they're the Skatistan, a Skatistan, Skatistan, I guess that's written on the bottom. I thought somebody had written on the soles. That's what, it, that's part of the design. Um, but these sell for, so they're on goat for like, or stock X for like $200. They don't sell for 200, but I should in this high top and this size clean up the sole a little bit. They're in good shape. I should be able to get like 75 for them. And I paid like $3. So sometimes you just need to cleanse your sole. That was ridiculous. All right. So the other thing that I found at the bins were these vintage Ed Hardy sneakers, mm -hmm. the tattoo Ed Hardy design. Uh, I had picked up another pair of these in Colorado before. Also small. These are women's. They're a small slide on, but they're the earlier Ed Hardy, like Love Kills. These are women's size five. Um, but so I would say these are 90s versus early Y2K based on the design and the size. I think I'm going to throw these in the washing machine as well. Mm -hmm. And these I'll probably get their small size, but again, I paid like $2 for them. And I think I can get the ones I sold on Etsy. I sold for like 75, I think. <coughs> so I think I should be able to get at least 50 for them. All right. Next, <coughs> this is probably my best bins find of the year. We'll see if I find something of the else. Year, it's January of the last well, year. February. February. Um, we'll see if I can beat this at any time uh, this, this coming year. Um, but I pulled this out of the bins, guys. So I saw this and I'm like, oh, okay, that's supposed to be Gucci, but who knows if it's real or whatever. It's and then, Yeah. And then I saw the tag. It says made in Italy. And I'm like, well, that looks a little better. Plus I felt it and you, it feels like quality. Like, you know, you can tell if something is like, it has a weight to it and a softness to it. And so I was kind of looking at it. For one thing, it's white, has no stains. Um, it has the, the inside tag. So I'm not any kind of Gucci expert, but of course I'm going to take a, a, take a chance buying it from the bins. But when I went and looked it up, every listing I could find, every picture I could find, every site I could find, including Gucci's own website, really confirmed to me that I was 99.9% .9 sure that it was real. The sizing, it's an oversized medium, all the size charts, everything, uh, all matched up. And this retailed for $590. And I was able to find comps anywhere from two to $300. And so I did list it for 300. And one of the things I really like about Grailed, even though Grailed uh, does not necessarily come through as a, as a big source of revenue for me, is that for luxury stuff, some of the higher end like hype stuff, they actually will go through without you even asking and they will authenticate certain items. I've had it happen a couple of other times. And so like within a few hours or day of me listing this on Grailed, I got an email saying, congratulations, your item has been authenticated and it will have the authentication tag on the page. And so when you go see this listing on Grail, it actually says authenticated. And so it just adds that level of um, confidence for your buyers. If they're going to buy something from you, they know they're getting the real deal. But seriously, guys, freaking white Gucci, 
not stained from the bins. Vicky was like, oh yeah, it's real. It smells like expensive cologne. It did. Um, and so uh, anyway, and it's a nice size and I put it up for 300. I have had one offer for 200 on eBay. I countered only because it, uh, it said it was going to come from a promoted listing. And I didn't want to pay an extra freaking $20 to sell it. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait a little longer because I think I can do it a little bit better than that. So that's my deal. That's my last piece. Listen, those, those of you that know Issy Miyake cologne, you know Issy Miyake. It has a certain scent, and it and it's an expensive cologne, and that's exactly what that was. It smelled like somebody had bathed in it. Like, <laughs> that, the it. smell came around the corner before the shirt did. Um, anyway, this is actually from Katie. I think she got this at her Goodwill trip yeah, uh, down the street. One, like, I think I got two things for myself and one thing for you. And she brought it home for me. So it's vintage, made in the USA, uh, Ralph Lauren. And it's Ralph Lauren on a black label, although I don't think it's not like black label, their clothing line. It's purple label, black label, not that high end. It just happens to be on a black label. It is made in the USA vintage. Um, it's just a sheet. It's a fitted sheet, but it's this really cool like pop art type of sheet. Um, I haven't been able to find anything on this. I've got to keep, I've got to dig a little deeper. But some of the, you know, as you guys know, with like the Ralph Lauren certain, um, you know, patterns like the teddy bears and all that kind of stuff, the polo bears, there are certain ones that sell for quite a bit because they're highly collectible. This is a really cool pattern. This, this could be like made into something else. Right. This could, exactly. That's that's why people buy single sheets, flat sheets or fitted sheets so they can use the fabric for something. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. I can't find the exact one. I'm going to keep looking, but I mean, it could be whatever it is because it's vintage and Ralph Lauren and it's rare. It's a minimum of $50 even yeah. at, at, on a twin size fitted sheet, I but I think like it could be worth more. more. I think it could be worth more. So anyway, I just wanted to share this one because I thought it was cool. So thanks for picking that up for me. You're welcome. And then of course it's a fitted sheet. So, you know, I'm not going to hold it because it's going to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it. So thanks for being patient with us while we take our sweet, sweet time bringing you another haul video. Um, but we really appreciate you. And again, if you ever want to see if we've sold these items or what we've sold, make sure you're checking out our Sunday shows, um, our Sunday live show. And the links to our stores are down below. We're pretty transparent. Uh, so you can see whether we've had a crappy week, like this week for me, or a really good week. Yeah, it's pretty visible. Yep. All right, guys, thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye. Bye.